All right, today we're going to look at uh, how to calculate a uh, discriminant of a cubic equation. All right, so the discriminant here, if r is t are the roots, we're going to have pairwise difference and then square. All right, of course, this value is zero if some roots are equal to each other, right? So let's review some of the concept here. So, so far we have learned that, um, you know, for the rules RST, there's what is called elementary symmetric polynomials. We call it sigma i, right? Sigma 1, 2, 3 here for the three rules. And in that case, sigma 4 uh, would equal to 0, you know, because in, in, our, in our case, degree is equal to 3, right? So for any k uh, greater than n, sigma k would equal to 0. The idea is that sigma 3 means what? Among three numbers, I take three out of three and then form a term here. That would be only one choice, RST, right? And sigma 2 is similar. similar. We also reviewed that there's a theorem that for any symmetrical polynomial, right? It can have a unique representation in terms of the sigma, change of variables, right? And that, that polynomial Q is what we try to find, all right? So here we have a polynomial that's a symmetric, right? This is a symmetric. So we would like to find in terms of sigma, elementary polynomial, you know, how to express in the original polynomial, right? So last time we introduced an algorithm, right? The algorithm is that uh, you're going to uh, sort the terms in next count graphical order, right? So in general terms here, we want to sort it by the de decreasing order of n1. If n1 is the same, then n2, so on and so forth, right? And then once we have the leading term, we got the leading term, and then the corresponding um, you know, term in Q, in terms of sigma, is going to be the the difference, right? The delta of the degrees, right? And then we're going to repeat the, the steps until, you know, the uh, the remainder is zero, right? So, so in our case, we notice that the original function here, if you express it out, you know, the leading term is going to be r to the fourth power add to the second power, you know, in that order, in the next graphical order, right? So in that case, you know, the Q, which is the term in the polynomial, is going to be different. You know, the degrees are going to be 4 minus 2, 2 minus 0, and 0. That that would be this, this is going to be the term, right? Yeah, because if you, your n, n1 is 4, n2 is 2, and then this 4, 2, 0 is going to lead into 2, 2, 0, right? So the term is, is going to be this. So the candidate for Q is, uh, so far we have this uh, term here. And then we subtract this term from the original function, right? The original function is here, right? We're going to subtract this term. Of course, it's quite a tedious process to figure this out, right? And I, am, I didn't do it. You know, I used some online calculator to, to have this. Now, what we pay attention here is the leading term. In this case, the leading term is degree is 411, right? So degree is 411, so the corresponding degree is going to be 301. Okay, 4 minus 1, right? This is a 4 minus 1, 1 minus 1, and, and the 1, right? So sigma 1 to the third power, and this is this is just the, the leading term. And then we're going to repeat the process, remember? So once you find the term, and then you subtract it, and then you, you repeat. So let's do that. So let's, uh, you know, this is a term. You know, the coefficient is likely 4 because this is a leading factor is likely 4. So we minus likely 4 and sigma 1, which is r plus s plus t. This is sigma 1. And this is uh, sigma 3, right? So we do some algebra again from an online calculator. And then we found the leading term is this, right? Now repeat the process. The term here is three three zero, right? So three 
minus 3 is 0, 3 minus 0 is 3, and then 0. So you have one term left. All right. So what you do is you do further subtraction, right? You subtract this here, um, minus f negative 4, and then sigma 2 is, is this is sigma 2, right? This is sigma 2 to the third power. Again, you do algebra, and then you cancel the terms, and then what you get is uh, is this one, right? So 18, I have 3 to 1 here, and this becomes um, 1, 1, 1, okay? So it's 18, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. So you repeat the process, right? So now Q, Q is none now, you, you add 18 here, and uh, you subtract the, the term, um, which is which is um, you know here this is sigma one sigma two sigma three and then you do the math and finally you end up with this right of course you can go on with with the process right but this process is actually a sigma three right so what we get is the q if you combine all the term together that's going to be your answer here right because you know we calculate um, step by steps of course will you call that if rst are the roots you know of this uh, cubic equation then you know sigma 1 is negative b sigma 2 is c sigma 3 is negative d so you plug in here you're going to get another formula okay so this this one is a discriminant so next time when you have a quadratic uh, you have a cubic equation you calculate this term is change to zero and means you have some equal roots, right? So uh, a lot of times when we solve cubic equation, we're going to cancel these terms. So B is going to be zero, right? We we'll use uh, a variable substitution and to re to to get another equation where there's there's no um, correct terms here. So in that case, if B equals zero, you plug in here. This is zero, zero, zero. You only left with with the final terms. So so the common you know, uh, value in that case, this delta would be would be this one, all right? So as you can see, even though we solve the problem, it's quite mechanical in the steps, but it's tedious, all right? You have to do the algebra here, and uh, that's that's uh, not an easy task, all right? So is there is there any better way? Yeah, actually, there is one, all right? So what we're looking at is that uh, first we observe that uh, when we expand this out, each term must have the same degree, which is six in this case, right? So when you when you look at the term expanded out, it's going to be r raised to some power, s raised to another power, right? So we're asking ourselves, in order to form a degree six, you know. What are the possible combination of n1, n2, so that it satisfies this condition? You know, you know it's kind of a, a decreasing order, right? And then we'll also notice that, uh, you know, in this term, there's no r, right? So r here is going to be square, this is going to be square. So the highest degree for r is going to be 4. So how you can have degree of 6 with r raised to, you know, certain degree, and this is the maximum is 4. Right, so if you have two, then this will be zero. That so you add up to, to to degree six, right? Or if this is four, this could be one, this could be one, right? And and so on and so forth. Like this could be three, and then this could be two, and then one. You add up to six. Or this could be uh, sorry, this this could be three zero first, and then two one, right? And um, or could be R two S two and T two. You cannot be R to the first power because uh, you 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 you're gonna violate this con this constraint here. Okay, so let's list out. All right, it turns out that uh, this is all possible terms here and corresponding sigma term. Remember, this, the way to do it is you do the degree differences. You know, four minus two. These two come from four minus two, right? And two minus zero, this is two minus zero, and this is zero. So this is going to be term here. Now, we claim that uh, with this method, the 
the final Q is going to be these terms add them together with some coefficient that we don't know, right? However, for the leading ones we know, because in the original term, when r to the fourth power is going to be the coefficient is going to be one, right? Because there, there's a r square term here, and there's r square term here, and there's there's no r here. So r to the fourth, the leading term is going to be coefficient is going to be one. So we know that a is equal to one. But how to figure it out? B, C, D, and E. All right, let's let's try that. So we know that uh, our, this is our final answer, right? But how do we know A is equal to one? We just reason that this is one. How do we know B is four, C is negative four, D is eighteen? Okay. Now this is actually when we look at this equation, right? So we reason that A is equal to one, right? Um, since this equation, this polynomial, they have to equal, right? This this is like equal. So you can ch choose different value of RST, and then you know try to make it special so that it's easy to identify the coefficient. I give you an example, right? So for example, let's try to make sigma three goes away. So if if sigma three goes to zero, then I will not have uh, c and uh, I will not have c. I can solve c immediately, right? Because this is this is known. So in order to make this zero, so let's uh, um, let's r, right? S t sigma one sigma two sigma three. All right, let's let's try different values, right? Okay. So r equals zero, and here I can say one. In this case, sigma one is going to add in the map. It's going to be two. Sigma two is going to pairwise uh, product, and then add up, and that's going to be one. Uh, sigma three is going to be, and you know, times them together, that's going to be zero, right? So in this case, when when we plug in the values here, right? The equation here, the left hand side is going to be zero because you know s e s equal t this, this this goes away, and so the left hand equal to zero. The equation right, the right hand equal to what? Sigma one square, right? Four, sigma two is one. So four plus this time is zero because sigma zero is zero. So you only have c sigma two to the third power. Sigma two is going to be oh sorry, there's a sigma two um, to the third power, right? Which is one, right? One to the third power. So c equal negative four. All right, great. So c is negative four now. So we we know c now, okay? So c is negative four, which 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 is which is correct, right? And and then if we so let's write it right. So if we further try to make sigma one zero, right? How do we do that? Let's say if you get this one, one, and then this will be negative two, you want to add them to, to zero. In this case, sigma two would be negative three, this will be negative two, right? So now we plug in the equation here. In this case, they equal to each other, right? So left hand is zero. But the whole thing is zero here because R and S equal to each other, right? Hmm. Okay, so sigma one square, sigma two square, is sigma one is zero, sigma one is zero, and sigma one is zero. So c is negative four. So negative four. Sigma two to the third power. Negative three to the third power. Right. 
plus e times sigma 3 is negative 2 square. Okay, so e is negative 27. Right, because this is a this is a four cancel and then twenty seven. All right, so e is twenty seven. That's cool. And then we just need another variable d and b, right? So and I won't um, complete the process, but. Uh, if you uh, would make a sigma two zero, that may help you, right? So sigma two zero, this term go away, this term, this term will go away, and then you may be able to find a B, all right? So let's uh, try that. So we know when we work with some new here, this, this is a 1, sigma square, sigma 2 square. B, we don't know, right? Sigma 1 to the 3rd, sigma 3. C, we know is negative 4, sigma 2 to the 3rd. D, we don't know, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. And E, we know is 27, sigma 3 square, right? So right now, we try to make sigma one, sigma 2 goes away, right? Sigma 2 goes away, this term will be gone. And then we're able to solve B, right? Because this this is you know we pick any value, so we pick uh, for example uh, negative one, and uh, uh, let me see, we paste two and two, that will work, right? So the summation would be three, and this one would be negative four, and this one would be zero. So when we plug in, because they're equal to each other. Left hand is zero again, so it's zero again, and the right hand side is going to be um, sigma two goes away, and b right b here is b sigma one to the third, which is twenty seven, right, and sigma three, which is negative four, okay, and then. Um, sigma 2 is goes away sigma 2 goes away so 27 minus 27 sigma 3 square sigma 3 is negative 4 and then you square it right so that means you have it, b has to be negative 4 negative 4 all right and then finally it's easy you just plug in any number you're going to figure out the d I'm not going to complete the process, but uh, you earlier we said that this is a b is like a four, right? So if if you know every every um, formula, then the rest would be easy. You just plug in any any value, any other value, you'll be able to solve it. Okay, so that's it. I think um, we just uh, used uh, two different methods in finding the. Um, polynomial for the discriminant of cubic uh, um, equations. All right. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.